Hello everyone, this is Tom Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 214 of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report. The FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report is sponsored by Advanced Compliance Solutions, your one-stop shop for all things compliance related. Today I have with me Felipe Sousa. Felipe is a journalist with Diagnostico Magazine in Brazil. And Felipe and his team organized a very interesting compliance conference that I recently attended and spoke at. It was focused on medical care providers, uh, pharmaceutical companies, healthcare providers, uh, medical uh, equipment suppliers in uh, Brazil. And Felipe took time to sit down and visit with me about some of his observations of the current uh, compliance scene in Brazil from the journalistic perspective. I found some of his uh, thoughts and ideas very interesting. Obviously, not being a lawyer, he had a different perspective on things. The episode comes in at uh, right at 16 minutes. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I'd like to welcome you to this episode of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report. Today, we have our first uh, live international episode because I'm here with uh, Felipe Souza from Diagnostico Magazine, and we are in the Hotel Intercontinental in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Felipe and his organization are holding a compliance conference for pharma the pharmaceutical and uh, medical supply and device industry here in Sao Paulo. And uh, I found some of his um, thoughts around compliance uh, quite interesting, so I asked him if he could take some time to visit with me during the conference, and he's agreed to do so. So Felipe, with that somewhat long-winded introduction, uh, thanks very much. Why don't you tell um, my listeners a little bit about yourself uh, and uh, the publication and what's going on here today? So uh, I'm from Portugal, and uh, I bring a, a different uh, view to the magazine. Uh, I, I come from um, a totally different culture, and when I arrived uh, in Salvador, uh, I thought things were a bit different. So there, we don't have uh, so much bureaucracy. Um, as we have in Portugal, Brazil is, uh, they have the, the jeitinho brasileiro, which means uh, the Brazilian way. It's like, there's always a, a, a easier way to do things and there o there's always a way to do things and get money out of it. So when we discuss compliance in Brazil, we have to know uh, the culture we're in. Uh, we know that uh, if a, a doctor uh, finds a way to get more money uh, by operating someone that doesn't need it, he will do it. You know that uh, we had uh, TV programs uh, with reports on uh, doctors uh, who worked for the public system and they just got there, they swiped a card and then they would go uh, straight to a uh, private clinic and operate. So this is the, 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 the country we're in, this is the culture we're, we're in. So it's a different, it's a, a difficult struggle. It's a fight against uh, something that's cultural and that's normal. It's normal for you to, to get money out of something that you weren't supposed to. So this is Brazil, and this is uh, the, the reality we have to deal with. And I think it was uh, pretty awesome to have you and Don Sika from the Cleveland Clinic to bring us a perspective of how things are working. Not just uh, in, in the US, you, you brought us the case of uh, Glaxo in China, which, which is uh, uh, very, uh, very special for someone who, who needs to understand what happens if you do the one thing, and I think people got that. One, one of the things I've been interested in is uh, really the work you and your magazine have done to bring these issues to light, and it's, it's more than investigative reporting, it's certainly that, but it's also how to do things the right way, and this conference seems to be a, a part of your efforts to help people understand, or what I would call the lessons learned. Could you comment on uh, that work you all have done? Well. The, the difference between us and magazines like us um, is that usually they, they just publish, uh, well, this is uh, innovation, this is some technology somebody uh, came up with, and that's wh what they do. Like There, there was this uh, scandal and they just talk about it. We find it's more important to, to bring things uh, that people don't know like compliance, people weren't discussing compliance in Brazil, but uh, we brought it up. We had uh, 
with uh, we had we had we ran interviews with with you and some other uh, specialists from the U.S. that gave us a view that we needed. We ran interviews with Don Cinco and the Cleveland Clinic to bring us the the view of the most ethical uh, hospital in the world. So this and uh, the, uh, the problem with overuse, which we are trying to to bring to to Brazil, are um, problems that weren't being discussed and i think that's our job if no one's talking about it but it it does exist you need to to uh tell people hey uh that has a name that is being is being discussed uh outside brazil for a long time and some lessons have to be learned these are the steps we have to take not we actually because we're just a magazine but our readers, who are mainly uh, physicians and uh, executives, uh, they need to know what's happening and they need to know that it's already being done. Steps are already being taken and they can just copy them. That's, uh, uh, I would, uh, the only point there I might uh, challenge is I think you do have a role and I think the press has an important role because we've seen many instances, certainly in the United States, where the press has brought uh, corruption to light and then the government has begun to investigate and then people like myself would come in and help companies uh, change their culture or put a compliance program in place. So I see your role as equally important as, as really as to my role and indeed the entire press going forward. So with that, I would like to ask you what, uh, do you, in your role as a writer and, and in your role with the magazine, have you seen your readers receptive to the messages that you're giving, not only about the corruption that's occurring, but the how to cure the or take the steps to prevent it? Well, to be honest, uh, sometimes I, I have this feeling that uh, our readers, most of them, well, well we're not for sale. Uh, we are a magazine that we just send them, we are sent to our clients. And as clients, they have to receive like 10 to 15 issues of the magazine. And, then they will read it or not, or just check if, oh, we have this article, we have this uh, uh, advertising. But these, these two days in Sao Paulo, um, they uh, showed me that people were reading, but actually reading and paying attention to what we publish. And that makes a difference. Uh, sometimes I, I, I have this feeling that um, People want a place to just, oh, I, I, I need advertising space and you're not that expensive. So uh, doctors read you, uh, hospital executi executives read you. So it's a good way to show a brand. But I saw uh, a couple of people reading the magazine and talking about our articles and posing questions, uh, uh, quoting them. So for me as a writer, it's amazing to have finally somebody saying, hey, they wrote this. Uh, how, how do you comment on that? That's pretty amazing. About, about uh, our role, well, our role depends uh, much more on interest than the, the quality of uh, what we do. We can have uh, amazing articles, and if no one reads them, it's uh, a, a very hard job. But uh, what I feel is that this event may change things. So let me turn to this event now because you mentioned uh, that a couple of times and I spoke this morning. Don Cinco from the Cleveland Clinic, the Chief Compliance Officer and Chief Ethics Officer spoke yesterday. What are you uh, trying to accomplish with your conference here uh, yesterday and today? Well, uh, being very honest, I think that this is not just about compliance or magazine or healthcare. You need to have uh, a strong name to get people's attention. So bringing on Cinco and bringing you is, well, the best way to get people's attention. Uh, not just about what you say, but when they come here, it's like, hey, who is the guy? I, I have to go there. So you got you to be important. So when they come here and they pay attention to everything you're saying, and they did, they did, um, I think that changes everything. Like I said, changes the world. We need, we need major change in Brazil. Uh, like you said, y you, you sent a, 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 a huge message of hope to people who are trying to, to fix what's wrong with Brazil. And uh, bringing 
uh, strong names, it's the first step, the name, and then the message. I think the message is more important to us, but to get people's attention, the name is the, the first step. The questions I heard from the audience and the questions that I've been asked uh, on the breaks seem to show to me that uh, people are really searching for what I call a business solution to a legal problem. They are distributor groups who are trying to get together to put a distributor code of conduct in place. There are university groups who are talking about how can we bring the message of doing business in compliance and ethically into our universities and our academic settings to train the next generation of professionals. Uh, are you seeing those types of really detailed questions being asked? Yes, um, we had uh, uh, Jose, Jose Eduardo is a teacher. Um, I, I believe he's the principal from uh, Paraná Med School. And um, he, he, he said something I, I thought it was uh, really interesting. He said, um, well, we're now uh, getting students out of college being really good uh, technically. So they're really good cl clinicians but they need uh, a, a personal a social uh, side that is not being trained so what they need actually uh, they need to be good uh, in business the business of medicine but also business ethics um, I spoke to Arlen Myers a, a, a couple of uh, months ago and he told me well you need to teach business in school yeah you do because nowadays it's all about money and medicine is no, is, uh, no exception and Don Cinco said something really interesting uh, that uh, well it's actually a business but if you don't operate if you don't operate someone someone else will need the surgery and the hospital will get the money anyways so you don't need to get people to go under surgery if they don't need to because there's a lot of people who will and this is a message you you, you gotta you gotta send to, to, to students to med students uh, you have to be a doctor, but you have to have uh, social skills. You have to have morals. You, you have to have uh, certain rules that, well, your parents were supposed to teach them, and uh -huh. they were supposed to apply them uh, in their jobs. The, uh, one of the questions I'm asked uh, is what is the perception of America around the Petrobras scanda scandal in Brazil? And I've been asked that question uh, a couple of times. And my response has been that I think Americans view, uh, I don't want to use the word hope, but a very positive step that the country of Brazil is taking. And even Petrobras is starting to address uh, some of the issues. And they're now starting to force their suppliers to address these issues. Is, uh, is this type of effort uh, something that you're seeing from your journalistic perspective as well? Uh. Y you remember when uh, when I went to, to get you at the airport, I told you people love blood? Yes. Yes, they do love blood. It's more important. Well, I'm talking about the, 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 the general Brazilian. He loves blood. Uh, the, main, the, the, the main focus here in Brazil right now is uh, Dilma and her party need to go away. Everybody's like, we are against corruption, and we are against Dilma, and we are against PT. And I'm telling you this as a Portuguese, uh, not as a Brazilian or someone. Well, I'm someone from outside Brazil who lives in Brazil, and this is my view. Well, uh, we have, I think, mm -hmm, almost every politician in Brazil is corrupt. And uh, there is no uh, good politician and bad politician in Brazil because most of all, m most politicians are corrupt. But you have one thing, like President Dilma, she's the only one that no one seems to, to find uh, anything that well she she did this wrong that that's not happening but a lot of other politicians have been discovered to be uh, hiding money or collecting uh, bribes and I don't see people that mad at, at this so everyone here is against corruption but not really for example a, a, a big a big issue here and, and something I find really odd that everyone brings the the, the national uh, soccer jersey which has the symbol of the football federation and it's one of the most corrupt uh, institutions in Brazil so they're fighting against corruption with the symbol of one of the most corrupt institutions so it's a, a very odd country with a, a very odd interpretation of what's important so everyone's against corruption but not really 
they they have a, a special target and what they want is a blood and i think that can be explained being so uh fond of soap operas that's a really interesting analogy so we've gone from uh politicians to petra ross to football to soap operas so uh, that's why i wanted to get your perspective as as not only a Portuguese, uh, but also a journalist. You can have a way of looking at things that perhaps uh, lawyers or compliance practitioners don't. Uh, I I I, tend, I try to 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 have the uh, the biggest view possible. So when when I when I get my opinion, uh, I get it from being Portuguese, from living in Brazil, from working as a journalist. I I had. Uh, uh, post graduation in, in law, so I have some concepts, and well, when I I, I m most of my friends here in Brazil are Americans, so I have a lot of different perspectives, and I think that helps me to come out and look things from a, a distant perspective, and not be so emotional about uh, Brazil and what's happening. So this is a, what it is. Uh, we have. A lot of people corrupt in Brazil, a lot of people against corruption in Brazil. And yesterday somebody said, uh, well, things happen and it's no one's fault. Well, Felipe, unfortunately, we're uh, near the end of our time, but I wanted to thank you very much for uh, taking the time to visit with me. And uh, if anyone wanted to follow up with you, could uh, they email you? And if so, how would they do it? Well, they can they can read the magazine as www.diagnostico. Uh, dot com dot br um, and my email is philip um, well hat uh, diagnostico dot com dot br if you have any suggestion well I invited Tom to start writing to uh, to have a, an article in our magazine um, every three months and if you have any opinion if you want to follow just do it thank you very much. again I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report. I have one announcement for you today. I'm very excited to announce that together with Michael Volkoff we are putting on a web joint webinar, our first joint webinar, next Tuesday December 1st at 2 p.m. Eastern where we're going to talk about the changes in FCPA enforcement that we have seen beginning with the Yates memo through the uh, new Compliance Council and Compliance Council metrics and the recent uh, news reports that the uh, Department of Justice will be changing their enforcement priorities, turning away from corporations and individuals and what it may mean for FCPA compliance going forward. Very excited to be able to do a webinar with Mike Volkoff. He's one of the leading practitioners and a guy that I really look up to in the FCPA space. I hope you'll join us. You can get more information by going to my uh, social media site, fcpacompliancereport.com, and looking at my blog post on Tuesday, November 24th, for full information about it and registration details. I hope you will join me and Michael. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you will come back again. Thanks.